Hello, 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 everybody. Hi, hi, I'm Jenny Weaver, and tonight I'm gonna share with you about the dangers of witchcraft. And I'm gonna talk to you about my life as a Wiccan and some of the things that happened in my life uh, during that time and how the Lord delivered me and why I'm not doing that anymore. So if you are new, you do not know who I am, welcome. If you're watching the the replay, I want to welcome you. Hello, hello, wherever you are in your walk of life right now. Um, maybe you're just here because you're curious. Maybe you're here because you didn't really like the title. And maybe you're here because you're upset about some things that you've been seeing on social media. Maybe you're here because you're curious. Maybe you're here because you have a family member who might be in witchcraft or the occult and you want some help and you want to know more about it. And so as you guys are jumping on, I'm going to ask you to do two things. One, I'm going to ask you to please share the video. And I'm going to take time to do that as well. I am live in a few different locations. So hello to everybody tuning in right now on Instagram. And hello to everybody tuning in on Facebook Live. Um, hello, hi, I see everybody. New Jersey's in the house. Wanda, hello. Creative, Jalen, hello. Uh, Marisol, I love you. Uh, the next thing I'm going to ask you for is just to begin to pray. If you're a believer, just begin to pray and just bless the broadcast that it will go far and it will hit who it needs to hit. It will reach who it needs to reach in the name of Jesus. And I know many people are going to tune into this and right now you're broken. Right now you're confused. Right now you feel like you're in a lifestyle of chaos and a lot has been going on around you. And I'm going to shed some light on witchcraft and the powers of darkness. And I believe that many people are going to be set free tonight. So that is another reason why I'm asking you all to share, share, share as much as you possibly can. And let's get this out to as many people as possible. Come on. I'm going to talk to you about some deep dark things that I normally wouldn't share, haven't really shared on a live broadcast before. So I will say this, I know that a lot of you let your children watch me sing the scriptures and um, I always get messages from your kids and you let them like send me little uh, voice memos, hi Miss Ginny and all of that. And so people were asking me, is it okay for my children to be here for the live? I would say that is up to you, but I am gonna talk about some things um, that happened in the house that I lived in uh, with another witch and um, little children, they when they hear this, it may be frightening for them. Um, unless you are, you're right there with them, you're walking them through that, I, I just want you to know that and I wouldn't want um, to scare any children that will be on here. So I'm just gonna give you a moment to go ahead and maybe adjust your volume, your sound, get the children in another room of course, you guys know my daughter's heard my testimony hundreds of thousands of times, so she is uh, in the living room listening. As you're jumping on, please again share. And I'm going to share to my page. Hi, Eric and Marisol. Love you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you for being on. Thank you for supporting. I love you guys so much. Thank you. Hello to all my students. Hi, Colleen. Hey, Vineland, New Jersey, I love you guys. God is good. Somebody say, God is good. Somebody say, God is good. Well, I want to get right to it because I truly believe that more people will probably watch the replay. And so I don't want them to have to wait a long time with the introductions before they hear what I'm going to talk about. Isn't it interesting that there's a movie coming out this month? It's the second one. The, it's called The Legacy, The Craft, The Legacy. But in 1996, when I was a teenager, and I was in, oh my goodness, I was in high school. I was being bullied. I started to get vitiligo in school. I don't know if you know what that is, but that is where you get white spots on your skin. And so I started to be bullied. Let me put this right here. And because of that, I was um, I was suffering with depression. I wanted to kill myself all the time. I actually fantasized about killing myself. 
I fantasized about murdering my mother. I fantasized about what life would be for everybody if I would just go away. And so I would go to school, I would be bullied, I would go home, and I had a very rough life at home as well. We saw a lot of abuse in the house, a lot of fighting, a lot of hitting, um, a lot of scars and bruising. Um, I'm one of eight children. And so it was a lot. And I am reading your comments, guys. Thank you so much for commenting. Keep doing that and keep sharing. The more shares, the more this is going to get out and it needs to be heard. So I, I got with a group of girls who were also depressed and also going through struggles in their house. And you know how it is when you're you're in a group of, kid, a group of kids and you want to fit in. And so we were the misfits. And I was the outcast. I was different. Uh, I'm mixed. And so at school, I'm... No one's like, oh, you're mixed. They're like, you're a black girl. But I was like rock and roll chick and um, the way that I talked. And so everybody would make fun of me. They would you're different. You're not, you're not like us. And so they pull my hair and beat me up and all this stuff. Um, they wouldn't do that now. <laughs> I had to. I had to throw that out there. But that's what was happening. And I got with these group of girls. And so we were listening to a lot of... Um, depressive, depressed, depressed, depressed music. I was listening to Marilyn Manson. I was listening to Nirvana. Nirvana was very popular. I was listening to Janis Joplin, who we know uh, died of heroin and drugs. I was listening to Jimi Hendrix, listening to someone called Tori Amos, which um, most of you probably don't know is actually a witch and she records music. And so I was listening to all of that and my friends invited me over for a sleepover and this movie came out in 1996 and it was The Craft and we all went to watch it. In my home you could not watch that. You could not watch that at all. We could not listen to any bad music. We couldn't listen to any worldly music as my mother called it. It was all Christian music. You better have all Christian friends and so I was sneaking out and dabbling in different things because I was looking for a way to control an out of control situation in my home. I was looking for a way to control the people that bullied me at school. I was looking for a way to get people to actually like me. It's true. And I watched the craft and I, I knew I shouldn't be watching it. And all of a sudden, I was taken into this fantasy world, and I, I clung to it. And I looked at that movie like, that's what I need. I looked at that movie like, that's what I want to get into. Because my parents were in church, but yet they were mean and nasty to each other. And so I swore off church. I didn't want to have anything to do with church. I didn't want to have anything to do with God. Nothing. And so I began to get with my friends and we would mimic the movie we would get together and, and at first it was just pretend or we we're gonna just play around and the scene in the movie where they all got uh their little tattoos and they did those self tattoos i literally have that exact thing right here on my stomach i did it myself i mean we went all the way through drawing the blood you know you pierce the thing all that they did we did it all and I'm thinking at first, oh, this is so innocent. There's nothing wrong with this. But then one thing kept leading me to the next thing. And there was a store by my house. And I would get my backpack on and I would sneak off to this store. And this was a new age store. And they had crystals in the store. And they had books on witchcraft and um, paganism and sorcery and magic and good magic and black magic and all of that was in there and I could learn about fairies and these fantasy creatures and gods and goddesses and uh, nature and all of these different things and all of a sudden I begin to look at different things and study out different things I wake up consumed by it. I wanted to know more I wanted to be powerful and so I would go into the store and I would actually steal the books the pamphlets, the crystals, I would take them, I would put them in my pocket, walk out of the store, and I would try my best 
to actually do magic in my home. A Christian home with a mama in another room that had no idea what I was doing. Yes, I can turn it down. I'm sorry, I like music, but I know how people are. I want you guys to be able to hear the message. I'm referring to the movie The Craft. And so I started to really study this out. And I like the, the religion of Wiccan. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically, it's witchcraft, but it is um, all about nature and uh, plants are gods and everything is. Everything in nature is a god, goddess. And so it was, to me, it was, well, this is very earthy. This is kind of just like hippie-ish. You know, we just love nature and there's power in everything and there's power in me and I can be a god and that plant can be a god and the dog is a god and the butterfly is, I mean, it was, it was to the point where I actually believed that there was God, God, but I thought, but we all can be that. And that's where just a little tiny thing, a little thing that I let in my eye gate, a little movie, a little bitterness, a little wanting to have control, wanting to take control, but not releasing that to the Lord and doing it on my own. That's where that little bit turned into more and it turned into more. And all of a sudden, before I knew it, I was a practicing Wiccan. And that's what I did all the time. And if I liked a boy, a guy, and I wanted him to like me, and I didn't feel like he was giving me any attention, then I would open up the book, and I would do the whole ritual, and I would do the spell, and put it on the person to have them bound to me. Yeah, this is real, guys. People are doing it all over the world right now. People are doing it as we speak. I know I see your comments. Thank you. Yes, thank you. And so, long story short, a lot of things went wrong in my life. I ended up homeless. Um, I was on the streets, my hometown. I was reaching and grabbing for anything. I ended up becoming a lesbian at one point. I swore off men. It was all about girl power, femininity. And listen, I'm all about, I know that women can be amazing and we can be strong, but I'm telling you, the way that I was at looking into it, it was an idol. I put that above everything. And everybody else had to come down underneath that. And that is not the way of the Lord. And so that's what I was getting into. And I'm out on the streets, and then I'm going to parties. I'm all over the place. I'm taking drugs all the time. You couldn't even, I didn't know what was day and night. Sometimes it would be days and days and days would go by. I would get in cars with strangers, never met them in my life, completely high out of my mind. And I actually wanted to die. And people would say, why would you get in a car with them? Do you not know that they could kill you? And I would say, I, I, I hope they do. I want them to. I wanted to die every day. And I was completely out of my mind. I became almost insane. Really, at points, I really felt that I was. So this is now fast forwarding. I'm, let me fast forward to me about 18 years old. I had dropped out of high school. I had lived on the streets for a period of time. My family was gone. I had left and just, I was on my own. I was, I was on my own and I didn't care. And I met a young lady. Actually, I, I actually knew her from years before in school and we reconnected. I know her, I know her family. I remember at one point they detoxed me on their couch. And so I love this family and she said, let's get together. Let's move in together. She was a friend. She was, let's move in together. And we found this little 
uh, ratted up house in the ghetto and we lived there and this was this young lady was a witch and her mother was a witch and her great great grandmother was a witch and all through her lineage they were witches and so I moved into this house with her and that's what we did one of the first things we did is we went to this to the uh, place it was called Elysian Fields this was the store and the town that I lived in where you could get all kinds of new age witchcraft things and the first thing that we bought was sage that's how I know what sage is this whole new thing that people are doing like it's like a new brand new trend years and years and years ago before it was a trend before Facebook was even created before MySpace was even created before any of it we went and got sage and you know what we did it would come in these little bundles and we would burn it and we would go into the corners of the house and we would try to get rid of evil spirits that we felt were lingering there. And that's what we did. And we would have our little chants, incantations, we would go around saying together. And it was no big deal. It was like, this is total normal life. So when I say to people, you better be careful of that door that you're opening. Because I know what it's really for. I know what it's really for. And people will say back to me. Unfortunately, they will say back to me. Well, I use it for this reason. But I don't use it for that reason. I use it for this reason. Well, if Ouija boards were all of a sudden used as serving trays, would you have one in your house and say, well, I don't use it for that reason. I use it as a serving tray. It's a really good serving tray. That would be foolish, right? And so it's the same thing to me. Because I would never in my life, I am telling you, when you hear what began to happen in this house, I would never in my life begin to burn sage. Ever. Having crystals, all these different crystals. I had a whole altar set up in my room, my bedroom. That's how we lived our life. Can I get an amen right there? And I want y'all to keep sharing because I truly believe that people are going to join in and they're going to get set free because they're just, maybe they just don't know. And so me and Nicole, we began to hold parties at the house and we invited everybody in. And one thing that we would do is we would take drugs, acid, ecstasy was very big at this time. We would take ecstasy, we would take alcohol, we would take acid, um, all of these kind of drugs that would uh, hallucinogenics. And we would take them for the purpose of getting high, but also because we knew that it would open us up to the spirit realm. And as high as we were, we would all get around and call in spirits to come into the room to give us information. Yeah, I remember one time we did this, I blacked out. I don't even really know how long, probably several, several hours, maybe seven hours, maybe longer, I don't know. All I know is the period of time and my memory was completely taken from me. All I know is that I went and fell out and all of a sudden I woke up in a totally different room with a different person around me and I was completely terrified. I began to scream because I was out of my, I didn't even realize I was in my house anymore. I felt like I was taken to a whole nother place. I remember when I was studying all of this stuff, I began to study how to leave my body and fly and go into the, uh, the spirit realm. Could go all anywhere I wanted to go. And I knew all the little breathing techniques that you did first. I knew exactly how to position my body. I knew all of that. And y'all are sitting here thinking that this is a game. Not everybody. But a lot of people are not awake to this. This is happening. The kids are experimenting with this. Adults experimenting and going all the way with this. People in the church. 
thinking that they're just doing these things. You're dabbling in, in new, new age practice and witchcraft practice. There shall be no mixture. Yeah. And so in this house, all of a sudden, what was fun party time began to turn into a haunted house. That's the only way I could describe it. Now, you guys would say a haunted house. You would think of ghosts and all this stuff. No, it was demons. And so I would go to Nicole because in my mind, she knew more about this realm than I did. And I would say, Nicole, something's going on. She would say, what is it? And I would say, I just heard all this knocking in the walls. And all of a sudden, you'd be sitting there. And, you, and you, what was that? That's when it first started. And I would be up all night long in fear, a grown adult woman hiding under the covers. I was scared to even blink. I said, if I even blink, they'll find me. They'll find me in the spirit room. Shadows going across the, win the, the window. We run outside. We, I would get her. We run outside. Nobody there. This is crazy. I know, but it's true. I remember when it started to get, I started to get really into it because my thoughts were do more magic, do more spells. We can do spells of protection. We actually began, we went to, uh, we got all these little plants. Um, it was, in fact, it was marigolds, beautiful flower, nothing wrong with the flower, but when you buy flowers specifically for the purpose of witchcraft, that's the problem. And we actually had a little garden. We planted a little garden and we put all these marigolds in these certain rows. And we said, now this is going to cause whatever evil spirits are over this house to leave. Because we believed in the power of earth. And I remember looking out my window. It was probably a day or two later. And every last one of the flowers were burnt up like they had been set on fire. And when I saw that, I got, I got Nicole and we ran, she came to the window and we were shocked. We actually went out there and we looked and we, we actually were looking for like, did something happen? Like, was there a bonfire out here? Like it looked like everything had been burnt up. And from that point on, it was torment all day long. I would run to her. We were in the hallway one time. I remember because you could feel a presence just come into the room. We would be sitting there just talking on the phone with a friend. She'd be in her room. I'd be in my room maybe listening to some music, just relaxing for the night. And all of a sudden it was like eerie. It was like demons were in the house with you. And I'm very sensitive and I would run in the hallway and she was already running towards me, terrified. And I remember us meeting in the hallway and I said, Nicole, what's happening? And as soon as I said that, there was a light above us in the hallway. Like if I showed you my light right now, I have the double lights and the lights burst both of them Psh! darkness and the glass fell all over us we literally fell to the ground crouching down holding each other screaming for our lives gripped with fear knowing that there were actual demons walking around the house with us and not any bit of witchcraft no matter how many nice crystals that we had no matter how much uh, we would do all kinds of yoga poses and we would do, I know people are going to hate me for this. I know they are, but I'm just telling you what I did as a practicing witch. Now, you have your things that you want to do, but I can only tell you my testimony. And if I don't tell it the right way, I will have to answer to the Lord. And so those are the things that we would do. We would try to rid our body of all darkness and let all the light come in and be completely balanced. And the third eye and all of this stuff didn't help. We were terrified. And at one point, I came to myself. I actually got scared enough to stop. I got scared enough to stop. Because remember, I was brought up in a Christian home. And so at one point, it was like the lights came on. Raise up a child in the Lord in the way that they should go. And when they get older, they won't depart from it. And even though my mom and dad didn't do it right, they still gave us the word of God. And I knew at one point, I said, if, I'm, if I don't get out of this, 
these demons are going to kill me. I really felt I'm going to go to sleep and they're going to come in and they're going to kill me in my sleep. And I had opened up so many doors and allowed people to come in through fornication, all kinds of people sleeping together and parties and everything. It was just whatever, whenever. And so what people think is harmless, what people think is just, hey, I'm just going to do this a little bit. I still love God. God's in everything. God is not in witchcraft. And the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. God is not in witchcraft. He is not in it. Can I get an amen on that? And so, yes, thank you. And so I got out of it to an extent. What I mean by that is I said, I took all the books, took all the little pamphlets, took all the different materials that I had, all the different dried flowers and all, all, the, all the stuff to do spells, incantations, all the altars come down, all the different candles, everything. I said, let's throw it all out. I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want it. But I never renounced witchcraft out of my life. And because I didn't renounce witchcraft out of my life, all I did was fall deeper and deeper into drugs. And I became a full-blown heroin addict. I was so addicted to heroin, I couldn't even get up out of the bed to go to the bathroom without the drug. And that's a fact. I wasn't even able to get out of the bed to move my legs enough to even try to walk downstairs or try to, I had no strength unless I had heroin and I kept it by the bed. And my life was, it was in turmoil. And I remember going through such severe withdrawals and I'm gonna tell you how I got deliverance by the way. I remember going through such severe withdrawals that when I would begin to withdraw, I would go into the bathroom and do all that withdrawal stuff, body aches, cold, sneezing, I mean, everything, puking, the bathroom, all of it. I would go, I would walk by the mirror of the bathroom, and I would look at the mirror, and I would literally see demons in my eyes growling at me, and it would terrify me. That's why I didn't, I didn't ever want to really look in the mirror. I was terrified of the mirror, and I would begin to punch myself to try to get the pain to go away from the terrible withdrawals. I would scream, beg, beg. I was with a boyfriend at the time. I would literally beg him, I'll do anything for you. Please, I'm begging you, just get me a little bit. And I, he would have to lock me up. He would lock me up so that I could withdraw and I would tell him to lock me up and I would open up the two-story window and I literally jumped off the roof. Jumped off the roof of a two-story building. Took the car, stole the car and drove to a whole other city just to get my fix. And would disappear, would steal from you, would walk right into your house and be so sweet and take everything that you had and you have no clue. And so that was my life. I went to a methadone clinic and I got off of heroin and then I jumped right into every other drug you could think of. And the last one that I tried was methamphetamines. And that took me to places I'll, I, I don't even, the Lord has literally cleaned out my memory from some of the things that happened. Hiding under beds. Two days under a bed. Terrified. Not even realizing that two days had gone by. Not moving, thinking that demons were walking and they were going to kill me. I would run outside and hide under someone's car in the middle of the night and I thought people were chasing me. I would see spirits in trees looking at me, monitoring me constantly. Witchcraft is not a joke, it's very dangerous. It started out with me watching a very innocent movie with friends and I just wanted to belong and people say, well, the movie's not that big, the movie's not that bad, this movie, uh, where they're telling the kids, all the kids, say these, say these words and we're going to do a little quick spell. The devil is a liar. Be careful. I never want to see kids go through what I went through. I never want to see kids take razor and cut their arms every single day like I did. I never want to see you, anybody on here. 
I remember being pregnant with my daughter and I would take razors and I would slice my stomach until blood would run all down my body. Now I'm not talking about something, this ain't a cute little testimony. This is the real deal. I went through it. I lived through it. And when I got on meth and I met my husband, we got pregnant. I was completely insane. I was hiding in people's sheds in their backyard, body completely eaten up with mosquito bites, going to the bathroom outside like a dog, completely insane. The way, even just the way that I would move my head and look around, it was like if you saw a literal, like when you see crazy people that are talking to themselves on the streets and they're walking, you feel sorry for them, that was me. Taking, doing that kind of stuff, because I thought bugs were all over me, pulling out my hair. It was crazy. And I remember being pregnant and still using drugs. And what I did in the middle of the night, one night after days of not eating, not showering, nothing but pregnant, I cried out to Jesus. Prophet McGee, I love you. I cried out to Jesus. And I said three words. I said, God, help me. And I remember, I remember feeling peace, but I didn't have any goosebumps. I didn't see lightning, no angels, nothing. Still in a meth house after I said, God, help me. Still doing meth. And a few days later, we had moved from that house to a hotel because we would go from place to place, car to a hotel. And me and my husband were in a hotel. And I was running from the cops. I had been running from the cops for over a year and a half. They would come in the house and they would look around. I would literally be in the house. I would be in a laundry basket and I would put the clothes over top of me. That's how tiny I was. And they would come in and they wouldn't even find me and I'd be sitting in the laundry basket right in the middle of the room. And they came into this hotel room and they busted that door down and they got my husband in a chokehold and he had all this meth and he put the meth in his mouth and he literally <laughs> swallowed it. God help him, it's a miracle he's alive. And they were choking him out the whole time and I'm over there screaming. Steven, stop, stop. And because I was screaming, they were holding guns at me because they were like, calm down, be quiet. And I'm over there pregnant on the hotel bed with my feet up, terrified, high out of my mind. And they asked me, what is your name? And before that, anytime I was asked, I already had a cover up, a fake name, a social security, the sisters, I knew it all. I said, I told them my name. And I said, I have a warrant for my arrest. And they took me, they put me in handcuffs in the front because I was pregnant. They didn't put them behind me back. And they put, they put them in front and they put me in the car. And the woman, I still don't know who she is to this day. She was a Christian and she talked to me and she said, you need to get out of this lifestyle and God has a plan for you. And she talked to me the whole ride to jail. And I went to jail and gave my life to Christ in jail. Of course, you know you do, a surrender. And then a few years went by. I was out, I was back in church. I was trying to live my life right. And these ladies said to me, would you like to go to a deliverance service? And because I thought I was saved, I had actually was on the worship team at this point. Um, that's what I love to do, I love to sing. So when I got out of jail and went to rehab for a year and my child was with me, I got out and I joined a church and joined the worship team and they put my butt right on that platform and actually ended up making me the worship leader and I was completely possessed by demons. Yeah. And these ladies said to me, would you like to go to deliverance service? Their names were Gina. Gina's probably on here. Maybe the other Gina's on here too. Gina and Gina. And I went with them and I said I would love to go because I thought it would be amazing to watch people get delivered of demons. I thought I was thinking of the movie um, The Exorcist of Emily Rose. I was thinking of the movie The Exorcist. It was very interesting to me. So I thought, well, if they're doing that in church, I want to see. Surely it's not going to be me because I'm saved and I was under the doctrine of once you ask Jesus to come into your heart, no evil can live in you whatsoever. 
So if you practice a cult, and if you've made covenants with devils, then all of a sudden, once you say, Jesus, come into my heart, then all of a sudden the demons go, oh, did y'all hear that? We got to go. Let's go. Pack up. We got to go. That's not how it was. That's not how it was. And so I went, and they did all these, all these prayers, which we're going to do in a little bit. And I'm listening to these prayers like, this is the craziest thing I ever heard. And they said, we want you all to, all, we're going to renounce all this stuff. I mean, I was sitting there for like 20 minutes while they were renouncing stuff. The guy standing up there, he's, we renounce this, we renounce that. Some of the stuff he said, I was shocked. I was like, what? Why are we renouncing that? I do that. Mm hmm Horoscopes, astrology. All of it. He was renouncing everything, ancestral stuff, witchcraft, occult, everything, all the way back generations and this generation. I'm sitting there like, what? What is this? This is weird. And what I was saying in my head was, I don't see that in the Bible. That was that religious demon. Mm -hmm. And after that, they said, now we're going to break up into groups. And if you want prayer, we're going to take you aside. We'll pray with you. If you want deliverance, we'll have our ministers pray with you. And ladies, lady says, uh, she wants to pray with me. I'm like, what do you want? You want to pray with me? Why do you want to pray with me? All these people, you want to pray with me? You don't need to pray with me. Come on. I'm here. To, I'm here to help you pray for people. That's how I, that's what I was thinking. She was like, no, I, want to, I would like to pray for you. So I'm a Christian. Anytime someone says they want to pray for you, what do you say? Normally you say, okay, you can get, let's pray. Let's do it. And so, she had her Bible. It was a little smaller than this, thank God. She said, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, pray with you. And she said, and I want you to actually keep your eyes open. And I had never done that in my life. I said, that doesn't make sense. Normally you pray, you close your eyes, you bow your head, you know. And she said, no, I want you to look at me, and I'm going to pray for you. Oh, Gina Barron is on here. And Gina Barron... I was just saying that you were there um, when we went up to Lakeland to the deliverance service that night. And she said, look at me. And she began to pray. It was a long time. It was a long time. Nothing happened. I'm sitting there looking at her like, okay, Anne. Anne, she's a, and we command you in the name of Jesus to manifest and come up and out of her. I'm sitting there like, oh my gosh, this woman thinks that I have demons. This is very embarrassing for her. That's what I thought. She obviously has no discernment, and she doesn't know what she's talking about. And so finally, I actually ended up interrupting the lady, and I said, ma'am, 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 no, I'm a Christian, and I don't, I don't have any demons. And she said to me, as loving as she could, she said, no, I know what I see. I know what I see. And then she said, with her Bible, she placed it on my head, and she began to pray in the Holy Ghost. And all of a sudden, it was like I was watching a movie. That's the only way I can describe it. Oh, I'm getting emotional. Why is that? Oh, I love the Lord. It was like I was watching a movie of me sitting in the chair all of a sudden. It was like me, the, the real Jenny, stood up. And went over to the side and began to watch this Jenny manifest against the woman and begin to growl. You know, and I'm watching and I'm like, no, this is not happening. This could not stop it if I tried, if, if I wanted to be composed and did my best to resist nothing that I could do was stopping this manifestation. And she had to bring some people over, men actually, to hold me down because I began to lunge and I took my fingernails and I began to try to scratch open the cuts and the scars that were on my arm from when I was a young girl. And she said, she began to call out stuff, you witchcraft, witchcraft demon. And that demon would, would scream and she would say how did you get in there how did you get access to her and the demons would reply they said she let us in here and they said and she said how 
What did she do? And they said she looked at things on the internet, spells and witchcraft things. She did spells. She opened up the door with crystals. This is the response to the minister. And they were talking about things that my dad did that I had no clue. They said her father did on the father's side. There was sacrifice, animal sacrifice. And they were talking about the things that my father had done. Now, I don't know if you guys know this about my story. My father's father killed his mother, my grandmother, and then shot himself. So that's suicide murder. And they said, no, there's been animal sacrifices. And then she would say, where is Jenny right now? And the demons would say, he has her. And they were talking about the Lord. He has her now. And they were mad. He has her now. And the Lord had come to rescue me and deliver me of demons. And I began to try to climb up the wall backwards and wiggle. And the men, y'all know I'm tiny. I'm like 125 pounds soaking wet. 5'8". I'm tiny, tiny. The men were holding me down. I'm over there throwing them around like it's like what? Like nothing. And I would even try to get spit to come out of my mouth. I'm just going to tell my whole story. Can I do that? To try to spit on the lady. It wouldn't even come out. I wouldn't even, I, I was forbidden to do that. These demons were trying to cut me and scratch me and hurt me. And so she began to go through, we, we break and bind uh, occult practices and satanic rituals and every bit of witchcraft and all. And so she would say, now, Jenny, we need you to come and we need you to say, uh, call on the name of Jesus. And I would go, I'm, if you've ever gone through this, you will know. It is a very shocking thing for the person experiencing because you don't have any control. And you're like, I know I can save Jesus. I see Jesus all the time. But at that point, I couldn't say Jesus. And she would say, call his name. And I remember in that, and when the demon said, he has her, I literally saw the Lord, Jesus Christ, holding me as a little, little girl. Like me hiding in the closet because demons were coming up from the bed. Holding me like a little girl, like I got her. And when it finally broke, after about two hours, on the floor, broke me. They actually let me go. And I just fell to the ground. And I just cried out to Jesus. And I couldn't stop saying Jesus. Jesus, 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 help me, Jesus. And that's how I got delivered. And so when I talk about the dangers of witchcraft and the mixing and unfortunately, it broke my heart to see Christians in the church saying, well, you should know better. Those things were passed down through your ancestors. The only thing that I need passed down is the blood of Jesus. That's the only thing that I need passed down. The only thing that I need to consult is the Holy Ghost. I don't need to consult the stars. I don't need to consult star signs and astrology signs to guide me if you have been mixed up in that today the lord is calling you to come and repent at his feet he's given you a chance today that's why you're on here he's given you a chance if you got mixed up in crystals because you thought it's harmless and they're just very pretty and you just wear it and you just it's your protection crystal or it's your crystal of light or or this one brings you happiness I'm telling you now, the Lord is, is calling you to his feet to lay those things down. Those demons that came out of me, they listed the things that gave them legal rights to me. Even as I was a worship leader on a platform leading worship when I first got saved. If you've been mixed up in horoscopes and you think that it's harmless, God is calling you to repentance tonight. If you've been mixed up in witchcraft, any occults, any satanic practices, Wiccan, paganism, worship of earth, worship of goddesses and gods, 
If you've been mixed up in any of that, maybe you did it knowingly, maybe you did it unknowingly, maybe it's been in your family and it's kind of just passed down and they're mixing it all together, including Christianity, and you think there's nothing wrong with it because the Lord loves everything. God's calling you to repent today. God's calling you to repent. Maybe you've been letting in witchcraft in your home through television, through movies, through reading different things. There's no reason for you to be involved in chakras. And none of it. Absolutely none of it. God's putting a line in the sand today. And I'm telling you, a few days ago, I was in this house and I posted something about consulting the stars and chakras and burning sage. And I listed the whole thing. I just actually just, just shared it. Somebody else had wrote it. I just shared it. And when I shared it, every demon from hell came against me. There were some things that I couldn't even share on social media. They were so vulgar. Threats actually against me. And I knew that the Lord was very serious. And so I remember cooking lunch for my daughter. I put my phone down and we were just sitting in the house. We just finished homeschool. And all of a sudden the Holy Ghost began to speak through me. And it was such a strong message. And the Lord was giving a warning. It was so strong that my daughter said after, what was that? And I said, the Lord is giving a warning. And that's when I said, I'm going live on Friday. And the Lord is calling people to repent. And so what I want to do, maybe you've been in a family and there's a lot of worshiping of saints. Come on. We don't worship saints. God said you should have no other God before me. Maybe you've been talking to dead relatives. I understand the pain and trauma when somebody dies. My father died. But guys, can I just tell you, your dead relatives, those that have gone on, they cannot speak with you from another realm. The Bible talks about that. If you have been hearing them speak, I will be the first to shed light on that. That is what we call a familiar spirit. It is a deceiving spirit. And it is sent to pull you away. And before you know it, all of a sudden that angel of light will turn into the most demonic, foul demon you've ever seen in your life. And you'll have... People are on here, you've been experiencing migraines. You've been experiencing, the Lord showed this to me today. He said, call out dizzy spells. And I, I just, the whole word spells at the end. I was like, okay, yeah. You get completely off balance. You're confused. Your sleep is off. You're sick in your body. There's been a mixture of the church and witchcraft. And the things of the world and the Lord is now saying come and and be clean before me lay all of that down get rid of all that stuff in the house you don't need sage to get rid of anything balance I don't care if it's a disinfectant like I said about the Ouija board I wouldn't have a Ouija board in my house and say well I'm not using it for talking to spirits I'm using it as a serving tray all you're doing is taking a tool of the enemy that is, burning sage is a tool of the enemy. I don't care how they, how they give it to you now. I don't care how they repackage it. They can repackage it a thousand ways. I'll never in my life have that stuff in my house. Because I know what happened to me. And I, I, don't wanna, I don't want that to happen to you guys. I don't want the demons to be saying, they let me in. And you're having nightmares and terrors and your kids are screaming. They're seeing stuff. So, if you've been mixed up in any of that, you say, you know what, I just want to make sure that I'm right with the Lord. Say, that's me. I, that's me. I mean, it could be any of the things that I listed. It could be horoscopes. It could be the crystals. It could be anything where you just open yourself up to another realm. If I'm taking my body and I'm putting my body in different poses, 
and these poses came from ancient places where they would actually conjure up spirits and I mimic that I don't care what they call it nowadays it is an open door Say, that's me. I see you over here. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you, Carol. Thank you for being honest. If you feel like witchcraft has been attacking your family, then I want you to say, that's me. That's me. Pray for me. And I want to just do a call right now. Lay it all down. Lay everything down. Whether you're, you're in it knowingly, you really didn't understand the fullness of it, you've been kind of wondering... Lay it all down. Lay it all down. Say, that's me. Come on. That's me. Never, ever, ever open the door. Some of you have been wondering about things. And what's crazy is, I see all your comments. Lots and lots of people saying, that's me over here. Thank you. I see your comment. I'm going to pray for you. If you're ever wondering, I don't know, is this witchcraft? Is this not witchcraft? But you're still doing it every day. And you're still asking the question, is it? Probably should stop, find the answer, seek the Lord. And then when you have the answer and God's given you the clearance to go forth with it, then go forth. But don't be doing it the whole time saying, I've just been wondering about this. Is that? And the whole time it could be. Lay it down today. Lay it down today. Some of you have been attacked by witchcraft in your family, in your body, in your children, in your finances, in your home, bringing confusion, bringing tears. I see all the comments. Yes, I'm going to pray. Yes, yes, I'm going to pray. There is about probably 150 people on Facebook that need to confess it. Confession is a way of closing that door. I, if you're embarrassed, then, that, then you just have to get over it but you have to confess it. I had to confess to get free. If I was to stay hidden, and if I was to let that thing, oh, I'll just take care of it later. No, I'm telling you, this is the instruction of the Lord. No judgment, this is a safe place. You have legit loving people here, like me, like Prophetess Sophia Ruffin, like all the people that are watching. They love the Lord and they want to see people free. Otherwise, they wouldn't be on here and they wouldn't be sharing. They're praying for you right now. Many of the people on here have gone through it and come out of it. Um, terrible darkness. Prophet McGee's incredible testimony. Um, Marisol, incredible testimony. So, yes. Okay, we're going to pray. We're going to pray. And just repeat after me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And those nightmares are going to stop. And those night terrors are going to stop. And even those lurking spirits and the dark shadows that you see. Some of you have been even, the Lord is, this is what I'm getting. Some of you have been even visited by um, these beings. You think they're angels and they're not angels. They're deceiving spirits. Who is that? The Lord's revealing it to you now. As soon as I said that, you just like a chill ran up and down your body. You said, oh my gosh, that's me. You almost kind of knew they would deceive you and telling you that they were from the good kingdom, the Lord's kingdom. No, they're not. They're from a demonic kingdom. Who is that? I have some prayers here we're going to say. And trust me, the Lord is with you. You wouldn't be on here if the Lord didn't love you. His love is so deep, so strong. Maybe your family left you. Maybe people in the church maybe have hurt you. Maybe people have been mean and nasty to you and misused your trust and abused you. But the Lord loves you. He's not like people. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. Okay, that one said, that's me. I see your comment, that's me. Donna said, I thought it was my guardian angel. In the mighty name of Jesus. Um, and this is a prayer 
from Apostle John Eckhart, who I love dearly. I break and renounce. You'll say this with me. Okay. It's better to say it out loud, okay? So even if you have to save the video and go back and do it. I break and renounce all ungodly covenants, oaths, and pledges I've made with my lips. In the name of Jesus. I renounce and break all ungodly oaths made by my ancestors to idols, demons, false religions, or ungodly organizations in the name of Jesus. I break and renounce all covenants with death and hell made by my ancestors in the name of Jesus. I break and renounce all blood covenants made through sacrifice that would affect my life. Say it out loud. That's right, Shodi, say it out loud. I break and renounce any covenant made with false gods and demons through the occult involvement, through witchcraft, in the name of Jesus. I command all demons that claim any legal right to my life through covenants to come out in the name of Jesus. There they go. There they go. I command, I break and renounce any covenant made with false gods and demons through the occult involvement and witchcraft in the name of Jesus. I break and renounce all spirit marriages that would cause incubus and succubus demons to attack my life in the name of Jesus. I have covenant with God through the blood of Jesus. Say it out loud. I am jointed to the Lord and I am one with him in spirit. I break all ungodly covenants and renew my covenant to God through the body and blood of Jesus. Now I'm just going to walk you through a prayer that I just feel led on my heart to just pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I repent for having any idols before you. I repent for knowingly and unknowingly practicing witchcraft and the occult, astrology, magic, sorcery, in the name of Jesus. I repent and I come to you now, Lord Jesus, and I ask you to fill my heart, fill me with your love, fill me with your power and your spirit, God. I lay them these things down today and I will pick them up no more in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I will follow after you from this day forward in Jesus name in Jesus name I see people crying all over the world right crying out to God. I, 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 I see people literally tears streaming down your faces. God is touching you. He's delivering you. He's comforting you. Some of you haven't felt the presence of the Lord in years. That's the presence of God right now, right where you are. That's the goodness of the Lord. That's the goodness of the deliverer. Mighty God. Yahweh is his name. Jesus. The Christ. Jesus loves you. He wants to come and set your whole family free. If you've been a practicing witch, 
Today's the day. Be delivered. And if you choose not to be delivered, and if you choose not to repent, then you'll be turned over to the wrath of God. I can only say it the way that God gives it to me. Today's the day. Tomorrow's not promised. That witchcraft and the craft that you have, it is not for you. It is not going to protect you against these demons that want to take your life. And they'll appear a certain way to you. And I'm telling you, today's the day you don't know tomorrow's future for you. But if you give your life to the Lord, you have eternity with Jesus. And if you don't, then your eternity will be forever cast out. Forever, ever, ever. Where there will be continual fire. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So guys, that's why I wanted you to share. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Someone's migraine just left. Migraine you've had in your neck, your the back of your neck and your head for days. It just left in the name of Jesus. Somebody's been dealing with shaking, just all of a sudden just trembling and shakes. That's what I see. I see this, this shake on you. And that thing is lifting off of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody's been dealing with um, intestinal issues. I don't know the word, sorry. But it's like your intestines are always in a knot. There's always like this tightness and there's just been so many issues in this area. I don't know the correct term of it, but right now you feel that all the pain is leaving. That's the power of Jesus. Jesus the healer is on the scene. Jesus is healing people right now. Pain in the back of your eyes. Someone's having pain like tension in these temple areas in the back of your eyes gone in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Where there has been infertility, there shall be life in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There is going to be peace in your sleeve. Somebody's been dealing with insomnia for about six or seven years. I mean, it's been way too long that you've been dealing with this. You've been on medication. You're trying to figure out what it is. You've tried to do breathing techniques. You've tried to do the music. You've tried to do all the machines in the room, and nothing's worked. And you will see that Jesus is healing your mind. You have the mind of Christ. Your sleep shall be sound. He will restore you while you sleep and you'll wake up full of life in the name of Jesus. Insomnia is gone. When you come over to, to Jesus, you get everything that he's prepared for you. Yes. In the name of Jesus, people are testifying. Yes, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I pray that this blessed you, and I feel the release to go, so that's what I'm going to do. Continue to share. Continue to um, send this to somebody, even if you do it privately, and say, you know, I just felt led because I love you so much. I want you to just watch this, and we let the Lord have his way. I love you guys so much. Thank you for tuning in. Be blessed. And I am going to do a part two where I talk about witchcraft in the church and the different things that I was doing while on the platform, while in the church, that I'm going to call out as witchcraft. And many of you may not, you may be surprised. You may be even doing these things. Um, but it is witchcraft. And so I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about rebellion. I'm going to talk about uh, these prayers that Christians can do when they're actually witchcraft prayers. And so I will see you next time. Be blessed. I love you so much. Jesus loves you. Bye, guys.